The purpose of this video is to introduce electric charge, the physical origin of electric charge, and the units of charge, and we'll wrap things up with an example of a unit conversion on charge. So we start with this experiment that we can do with static electricity. In the first picture you're looking at, I've rubbed a plastic rod with a piece of fur, and I do it to a second rod as well. One of the rods is suspended from a string so it's free to rotate. And when I introduce this rod to the one that's suspended from the string, the one on the string moves away from it. So these two rods are repelled from each other. I do a similar experiment with glass rods rubbed with felt. And I see the same behavior. When I introduce the glass rod to the one on the string, it repels the one that's free to rotate. And then it gets interesting in the third picture where I charge the plastic rod by rubbing it with fur, charge the glass rod by rubbing it with felt. But when I introduce the glass rod, I see that it attracts the plastic rod that's free to rotate. So how do we explain this behavior? We explain it by saying these rods are being charged when we rub them with different materials. There are two different flavors of charge that we'll call plus and minus. And like charges repel each other. So that's consistent with these first two pictures. And unlike charges attract each other. And that would explain the third picture. So here's what it looks like. So it actually turns out that the glass would typically be positively charged. Plastic would typically be negatively charged. I can see that when I charge these things by rubbing them with materials, I have like charges repelling in the first picture, like charges repelling in the second picture, and then unlike charges attracting in the third picture. Just one more point I wanted to make on this slide is that the units of charge are called coulombs, and then we can summarize what we've learned. First, charge comes in two flavors, and we call them plus and minus. And second, the units of charge are coulombs. When I write these brackets, it means the units of. We typically use a Q to talk about charge. So bracketed Q, the units of charge are coulombs, capital C. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at the physical origin of charge. And to do that, we have to go all the way down to the atomic level. So an atom is made of a positive nucleus with electrons orbiting around the nucleus in a cloud that has a diameter about 100,000 times as big as the nucleus. So you can tell our diagram is not quite to scale here, and it's because the nucleus wouldn't even be visible if I tried to scale it properly. So the nucleus is made of protons, which are positive, and neutrons, which I tried to show in white here, that are electrically neutral. And then the electrons orbiting around the nucleus are negative. It's the attractive electrostatic force between the positive nucleus and the negative electrons that keeps those electrons in orbit around the nucleus. I should point out that the positions of these electrons are actually given by complex probability waves that are called orbitals. So the electrons are kind of smeared out in these orbits, but we can use this simple classical model as a first approximation. So the electrons and protons have exactly the same magnitude of charge, and that's called the elementary charge. It's just that the protons have plus one elementary charge and the electrons have minus one elementary charge. Now, when a solid material like the plastic or glass in our electrostatics experiment, the nuclei are, are pretty much locked in place. They're not going anywhere, but the electrons are relatively easy to rip off of atoms and move around. So if we go back and think about that experiment and try to understand it in terms of the physical origin of charge, when we're rubbing two dissimilar materials together, it's nearly certain that one of those materials is going to have a greater affinity for electrons than the other one and you always end up with a bit of a charge separation happening. If you end up stripping electrons away from a material, then it ends up having a net positive charge, and that's what happened to the glass. If an object strips away electrons from a material, like the plastic did from the fur, then it acquires a net negative charge. To wrap things up, we'll do a quick calculation just with a unit conversion involving charge. So our question here is compute the number of electrons in negative one coulomb of charge. So I start with my negative one coulomb and I multiply by a conversion factor. I'm going to say there's one electron for every negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and I can see that my minus signs cancel out, my coulombs cancel out. And the only unit I'm left with is electrons, the number of electrons. So when I ran the numbers on this, I got 6.25 times 10 to the 18 
electrons. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.